Hermann J. Mankiewicz, born in 1897, was the son of immigrants Franz Mankiewicz and Johanna Blumenau. They fled post-pogrom Germany due to rampant anti-Semitism, seeking safety in the United States. Hermann J. Mankiewicz, a highly intelligent child who loved reading, couldn't win approval from his demanding father. The impossible expectations had a lasting impact on Mankiewicz's life. Stay tuned for more on this story. Mankiewicz, destined for Oscars, grew up on Academy Street in Pennsylvania. Though unsure why it's called Academy, the irony is undeniable. Mankiewicz, who attended an Ivy League school, returned to NYC in 1913 and pursued philosophy at Columbia University. Surprisingly, he became the managing editor of the American Jewish Chronicle before turning 21. However, as we all know, life has its own plans. News anchor, renowned wordsmith and filmmaker, Mankiewicz, not only mesmerized us with his wit but also showcased his bravery as a war veteran. Like Tolkien, Dahl, and Hemingway, he served in the Great War. With a pen mightier than the sword, he went on to leave an indelible mark in the world of cinema. In an unexpected twist, the former director of the American Red Cross News Service in Paris during the Great War turns out to be none other than Hermann J. Mankiewicz, a budding writer. Although not a doctor, his words have been believed to possess a healing power. German correspondent Mankiewicz's journey after World War I led him back to Berlin as a foreign correspondent for the Chicago Tribune. However, his investigative journalism wasn't his sole focus during his time in Germany. Famous dancer Isadora Duncan hired Mankiewicz as her publicist in Berlin. Despite the job's unreliability, it provided a refreshing break from German politics. In Germany, Mankiewicz faced financial struggles, relying on his paychecks which were not always consistent. His stint with Isadora Duncan, known for her unreliability, wasn't any different as she rarely paid him. This precious opportunity lasted merely a few months. Marriage, fame, and a past filled with wild nights. Mankiewicz, known for his wild antics, tied the knot with Sarah Aronson after his return from World War I. No scandals, no hidden affairs, or so it seems. Stay tuned for more on this secretive Hollywood love story. New Yorker Mankiewicz bids farewell to Berlin, embraces the Big Apple. Now a reporter for New York World, he spices up his writing for Vanity Fair and other papers. But, who said the truth had to be dull? In a surprising turn of events, news reporter Mankiewicz tried his hand at playwriting. Despite his writing talents, his first play, The Good Fellow, flopped and ended after only seven lackluster showings. However, Mankiewicz remains determined to succeed, proving that resilience is key in overcoming failure. Following a disastrous Broadway debut, Mankiewicz teamed up with Mark Connolly to write The Wild Man of Borneo, only to face another flop. Unable to find success on stage, Mankiewicz turned to teaching and criticizing others. Tough luck for him, but it seems the critics were relentless. Mankiewicz, a former theater critic, made a surprising move to the New York Times drama department and later became the first theater critic for The New Yorker. Despite facing two flops on Broadway, his transition showed his determination to make a mark in the theater world. Unfortunately, he couldn't rewrite history and receive positive reviews for himself. New York City has always been known for its vibrant and eccentric characters, and one such personality was Herman J. Mankiewicz. Often referred to as the funniest man in New York, Mankiewicz rubbed shoulders with other witty figures like Alexander Wolcott. The city surely had no shortage of vibrant personalities. Mankiewicz, a member of the Algonquin Round Table, joined a clever and gossipy clique filled with writers, actors, and critics. Although not a literary movement, this exclusive club formed a bond among highly intellectual individuals. In a humorous twist, they might as well have adapted the famous line, you can't sit with us. Alexander Wolcott was not the only one who recognized Mankiewicz's talent. Film producer Walter Wagner, impressed with his wit, offered him a job in Hollywood. 
Mankiewicz headed to Los Angeles with dreams in his heart, ready to embark on a new journey in the film industry. In the world of Hollywood, success came quickly for Mankiewicz. Within a month, he was earning a staggering $6,000 per week. Shortly after, he rose to the position of head of Paramount Scenario Department, though the significance of this role remains unclear. Perhaps he should have renamed it the Situation Department, giving himself the nickname, The Situation. Mankiewicz, famous for his wit and sarcasm, became a beloved figure in the movie industry. He was given the responsibility of hiring writers at Paramount. With his love for alcohol and cleverness, he recruited like-minded New York newsroom writers. He was known as the godfather of screenwriters. Legendary screenwriter Mankiewicz's irresistible offers became talk of the town. One, in a letter to friend Ben Hecht, offered $300 per week with all expenses covered. He boasted of countless opportunities and warned about competition from dimwits. Certainly a tempting proposition. Ben Hecht was a prolific writer and he eagerly accepted Mankiewicz's highly lucrative offer. Despite Mankiewicz's claims about Hollywood's competitive nature, hard work was still required. Mankiewicz worked on over 25 films from 1927 to 1929, impressing Hecht who described him as Promethean in his abilities. Hecht had nothing but praise for this screenwriting wizard. Renowned screenwriter, Mankiewicz, widely recognized as the funniest man in New York, receives further accolades being compared to Voltaire and referred to as the Central Park West Voltaire by writer Ben Hecht. However, Mankiewicz's life did not mirror Voltaire's longevity. Prominent writer Mankiewicz was particular about his film choices. Even when pressured by Paramount to write for a Rin Tin Tin film, he rebelled by crafting a script that wasn't suitable for all audiences. The iconic German Shepherd didn't end up being portrayed as the typical hero in Mankiewicz's version. Interesting turn of events. Renowned screenwriter Hermann J. Mankiewicz defied Paramount's orders to write a Rin Tin Tin film by submitting a peculiar script. In this twist, the heroic dog starts by fleeing from a tiny mouse and ends by rescuing a baby in a blazing house. Unsurprisingly, Paramount decided against producing the film. Mankiewicz, the unsung hero of Hollywood, wrote, edited, and produced countless films without receiving proper credit. Despite his immense contributions to classics like Monkey Business and Horse Feathers, his name rarely graced the marquee. However, he did get credit for Dinner at Eight. But wait, there's more. There's a surprising movie you probably didn't know he was largely responsible for. Mankiewicz, an enigmatic figure in Hollywood, possessed a peculiar mix of misanthropy, humor, and wit. Considered an erratic genius, his unconventional personality and writing style brought him both success and downfall. Learn more about this fascinating figure in a Wall Street Journal article by Scott Amon. Mankiewicz, a talented filmmaker, faced obstacles in his career. During World War II, Joseph Goebbels, a German minister, banned Mankiewicz's films from screening in German theaters unless his name was removed from the credits. This made things difficult for Mankiewicz, and his struggles were far from over. Renowned writer and cynic Mankiewicz faced a downfall due to his excessive drinking and gambling. His fame and notorious behavior overshadowed his literary brilliance. Ultimately, Paramount had to part ways with him. Lesson learned, showbiz is unpredictable. One day you're in, the next day you're down and out. During the 1930s, Mankiewicz faced challenging times and even resorted to working as a waiter. However, in 1932, he landed a role as a waiter in a Broadway play called Blessed Event. Thankfully, the play's success brought him back on track after a series of failed Broadway productions. Redemption was finally in sight for Mankiewicz. Herman J. Mankiewicz's role in the iconic film Citizen Kane is shrouded in controversy. Though Orson Welles is widely credited, Mankiewicz played a significant part. This article dives into the fascinating story behind the making of this film, challenging popular beliefs about its creation. Citizen Kane, often regarded as Orson Welles' vanity project, was recently questioned as to whose brainchild it truly was. 
Despite Wells' involvement in nearly every aspect of the film, doubts arose upon its release. Stay tuned for more intriguing insights into the creation of this legendary cinema masterpiece. Citizen Kane, considered a masterpiece, credited Orson Welles as the solo genius behind it. However, Mankiewicz's revelation about the film's creation challenges this notion. Mankiewicz, an influential figure in the film industry, asserts that he played a significant role in writing the iconic movie Citizen Kane. He expresses his anger over Orson Welles receiving all the credit, stating that every line in the film was written by him before any scenes were shot. A claim that sheds new light on the acclaimed masterpiece. Herman Mankiewicz, the screenwriter of Citizen Kane, has finally been recognized for his significant contribution to the iconic film. Not only did he credit himself, but renowned film biographer David Thompson also acknowledges Mankiewicz's influence on the screenplay. As we delve deeper into this story, it becomes clear that Mankiewicz's role in the creation of Citizen Kane cannot be disregarded. RKO's promotion of Orson Welles' one-man band performance in Citizen Kane irked Joseph Mankiewicz. Film columnist Luella Parsons' report quoting Welles claiming sole authorship made Mankiewicz enraged. Understandably so, as it diminishes his contribution. Orson Welles backpedaled on his previous statement after being pressured by Luella Parsons. He claimed he intended to credit Mankiewicz from the start, but it feels like he's just a cheater caught in the act. And the drama didn't end there, Mankiewicz had some scandalous revelations of his own. Stay tuned for more juicy details. News Anchor In a surprising turn of events, accusations of bribery have emerged in the world of cinema. Renowned writer Mankiewicz claims that Orson Welles offered him $10,000 to take full credit for the script of Citizen Kane. The question arises, is this considered plagiarism or simply publication? Both parties seem to be at odds, and the need for legal intervention becomes apparent. Stay tuned as this story unfolds. Wells and Mankiewicz's feud continues as Wells denies offering money to remove Mankiewicz's name from credits. Wells admits love turned into hate due to Mankiewicz's accusations, denouncing him as a co-author. Let's look at the evidence to uncover the truth. New evidence suggests that renowned film Citizen Kane, widely believed to be solely authored by Orson Welles, may have actually been the brainchild of Herman Mankiewicz. This revelation challenges the long-established notion that the movie was based on the life of famous media tycoon William Randolph Hearst. Is it possible that Mankiewicz played a much larger role in the creation of this iconic film than previously thought? Mankiewicz, connected to Hollywood prodigy letterer, who was the nephew of actress Marion Davies. Davies was the mistress of media mogul Hearst. Now, Mankiewicz met Hearst through Letterer and Davies, completing this intriguing web of Hollywood connections. Hearst and Mankiewicz had a story-swapping connection, as noted by film critic Pauline Kael. However, screenwriters tend to convert personal stories into movies, but it seems Hearst was unaware of this, as his experiences may have unknowingly entertained audiences worldwide. Biographer Richard Merriman reveals that Mankiewicz, the renowned filmmaker, had a negative opinion of media tycoon Hearst. Merriman describes Hearst as manipulative and cunning, much like the central character in Citizen Kane. This parallel may not only resonate with the audience but also with Hearst himself. Hearst despised Citizen Kane, starting a grudge against its creators. His media empire ignored the film, blocked its distribution, and refused to advertise it. With Hearst's power, I'd distance myself too. Citizen Kane's true origin may have just been unveiled. Rosebud, the iconic symbol in the film, was actually Mankiewicz's stolen bicycle from his childhood in Pennsylvania. This crucial evidence strengthens the argument that Citizen Kane was indeed his creation. Stay tuned as the case nears its conclusion. Mankiewicz, known for his self-destructive habits, was put on probation. His shot at redemption came just in time as he was on the verge of collapse. Orson Welles had to hire a producer to keep him sober while working on Citizen Kane, debunking the myth that Mankiewicz dictated the entire screenplay from his sickbed. 
Today we are reflecting on the life of Mankiewicz, a successful Hollywood figure with a tragic tale. Despite a wonderful career, he wrestled with inner dissatisfaction, as revealed by his poignant quote. It seems he never discovered his true passion, and the story of his life serves as a reminder of the search for meaning. Mankiewicz, a screenwriter, played a significant role in creating the iconic movie, The Wizard of Oz. He came up with the idea of filming the Kansas sequence in black and white, creating a contrast with the vibrant world of Oz. However, despite his visionary storytelling, he received no credit for his contribution to this legendary Hollywood film. In a mysterious revelation, it seems that Orson Welles may have hidden meanings in the iconic film Citizen Kane. While he never explained the significance of the infamous Rosebud theme, there are speculations about a scandalous origin involving a love affair between Marion Davies and William Hurst. Could this be the secret behind the enigmatic symbol? Let's delve deeper into this intriguing story. After a fierce debate over the authorship of the film, Mankiewicz and Wells finally received credit for Citizen Kane. They even won the Oscar for Best Original Screenplay. But after all the controversy, the ending was somewhat underwhelming. Citizen Kane, a groundbreaking film, missed its moment at the 14th Annual Academy Awards as neither Mankiewicz nor Wells attended the ceremony. Despite being in South America, Mankiewicz's absence was attributed to not wanting humiliation. A missed opportunity for recognition that would not come again. Mankiewicz, a famous individual, tragically lost his battle with alcoholism, dying from uremic poisoning at 55. In his own words, he described himself as a rat trapped in his own construction, constantly repairing the trap to prevent escape. His decision on making it bomb-proof remained uncertain. <laughs>